Help me speaks elderly gentleman. <laughs> this is David Fishoff, a guy who has so many credits that it almost sounds fake. He's done so many things with his life. They say he took the yarmulke to the next level. But the real thing about David is they call him the Jewish Santa Claus because he wants to make people's dreams come true. And I don't know, if you're on the fence about anything in your life, this kind of feels like do it. Uh, I went to the first ever comedy fantasy camp and it was scary for me. And we talk about fear and a lot of other stuff. I think it's interesting. He thought it was great. If nothing else, you'll see me massage a famous person in an undisclosed location. Thank you for listening. Um, no, I love massage. The massage is important. Um, this is going to be, this is the first, you know, uh, first request I ever got like this. So. Uh, for a uh, chair massage? Yeah. No, ch not chair, but, but the... Uh, filming it? Yeah, filming it, yeah. Oh, I think I am the first. Yeah. I certainly hope so. Um, okay, so uh, everyone, I unplugged the fridge. Airplay mode permission. Okay. You got so, permission, and yeah. Okay, I thought what I would do is um, actually, because I don't want to forget to say these things, yeah. is, um, okay, I don't know I'm trying to get emotional, but I just want to say thank you very much uh, for your valuable time. And I felt like you treated all of us um, at camp, like even though we're no one, I felt like you treated us like we were someone. You know, I feel like you give us the same respect. And that's why I'm here. That's awesome. Told, that's what I figured. Yeah. I said to Miles, if Liz took time out to come to my creation for four days when she's creating something, I'm going to come support her. Thank you so much. That, and yeah. to me, um, Comedy Camp, Rock Camp, um, my dream was to give everyone the experience I gave Ringo Starr. And I wanted to treat everybody like Ringo as much as I could. Um, because, you know, once you come to the camp, I want to make sure everybody gets that amazing experience. And that, that's yeah. why I think we've been lucky to have... 50% of the campers returned. So at the comedy camp, we also had 50% of the campers returned. And um, it was great. Wow. That is cool. Yeah. Um, and I, that's what I said, is that I felt like you you did make us feel cared for. And that I was really scared to come to L.A. Like, I had a lot of fears about performing at the improv and all that other stuff. And it just seemed like it was a perfect place. It also renewed my faith in my talent, my dream. Oh, that's great. And that's what, that's what I want to hear. That. That's what it's really about. It's uh, for me. It's I'm not a comedian. I wish I could be. I wish I I, I, I didn't. I'd be scared to get up there. Uh, I wanted to all the time, starting the cat schools, and I really wanted to be a stand up comic. And it's so hard. And I give everyone credit for 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 getting up there. And and and, and the first credit people get is for coming. Um, you know, the first thing you do is to come. And um, the reason that that said is I was invited to um, to Michael Jordan's fantasy camp. Oh. And years ago, and my dearest friend invited me, and you know I didn't go, and and I said I'm not going to go play one on one with Michael Jordan, and and it was one of the biggest mistakes I made, and I regret it because I was scared, and I think that's the biggest issue that we have at these fantasy camps is people are scared to come. Now, why are they scared? Because they're very successful uh, business people and successful teachers and successful mothers and successful in everything, you know, executives. Not, and, not, all, not all the comedians, including myself, but anyway. Right, well, but, but what happens is, is here you are, you're successful in one area, and, and now you're, 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 you're doing something totally different. You're, you're going to be in a band with people. Yeah. Um, you're going to get up there and have to do stand-up in front of other people. Yeah. And that's scary. And, but I, what the greatest thing is, is that once you can break that barrier, and, you know, I love what you said. It, it gives everyone a confidence. And, and from that comedy camp, so many people have gone on to perform gigs. People have started podcasts. The friendships people got. Yeah. Um, so to me, that's why it's, it's such an exciting, um, I give people so much credit to come. So, you know, I'm here to support you. And, and I think it's great. And, you know, because it's, it's, you know, people are scared. And I, I don't blame them. You know, change is a... Is a very uh, six, dirty six little word. <laughs> Explain that. Change, C H A N G, is just basically. Just, yeah, like, people are afraid to change their lives. Fear, and, yeah. Yeah, and they're, you know, it's easy to get on a cruise and drink a lot of alcohol mm -hmm. and uh, listen to bands, but to get on that stage, you know. Yeah. And, and, you, and, you know, we see this at Rock Camp. We see it so every day is another miracle. 
It's, oh. it's a camper writing to you that, um, hey, I recorded an album. Oh. I opened for this band. I, you, 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 you can't believe it. Every day we, 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 we have emails and, you know, now Britt and Miles and I, we, we get on a Zoom every morning and we just share the, the oh. information. And it's so exciting. You know, this morning we had a Zoom and we shared about, um, I mean, I'll tell the story. I brought 10 victims from October 7th to Rock and Roll Fantasy oh, Camp. Oh, wow. Um, I went to, um, I was in Israel October 5th and I yes. left and I saw, you know, I was, I was visiting Israel and my son is over there and uh, I was walking on the street and a lady says to me, David, do you remember me? And I said, I sure do. She said, my husband is a general in the army. And I bet you he'd love to show you, you know, his his base. And I said, I want to go. And October 5th, oh, I was a mile out of Gaza on an Israeli base with a, um, being, being showed a, a tank. A guy took out a tank for me, showed us, you know, arms, everything. And then I flew home and then all of a sudden October 7th breaks out. And um, my son was still there. He was fine. And then I went to visit him in December. And when I came to Israel in December, I called my best friend, Sam Grunwer, who was the president of an organization called Karen Asod. And he collects money worldwide for the state of Israel. And I said, Sam, I want to see what happened October 7th. Can you arrange for Mordechai and I to go down? And uh, he set up a car, he set up a driver and his people. And we went down to see all the damage down there, a place called Nero's. And, and um, as, as I'm going down and seeing everything, I meet the mayor who runs all the, uh, runs that area down there. And she says to me, David, she says, I have to leave now. I'm going to a funeral. I said, whose funeral? She says, well, you know, there were three hostages that, that were uh, in Gaza and they, they were escaping. And by mistake, the soldiers um, shot them. And one was a, um, one was a, um, uh, a drummer, a metal drummer. Mm. So I went to his funeral. Oh and gosh. it was, you know, and then about 10 minutes in, his brother starts playing the drums. Oh, God. Like a 20-minute drum solo. Oh, no. And then the mother took the sticks and she threw them in the grave. And I said to myself, I said to Sam, I, I said, we got to get, we got to bring 10 Israelis, uh, victims, Ooh, to rock him. Yeah, I know what we can do. Yeah. I know what this camp can do. It can change people's lives. So we got that drummer and we found nine other people that we, we interviewed and you know, all had been victim uh, victims. You know, one young lady was at the festival. Anyways, to make a long story short, they came, and it was the most incredible experience ever that I was able to take what I do and give back. Mm. And and then so this morning we opened up our emails and we see that the ten of them are in Israel performing together. Oh my goodness! And they're best friends. Oh my goodness! And they're going to start playing gigs together. Oh. So how cool is that? That yeah. you're able to give people a dream. So, you know, I love my job. And, and I think that it keeps me motivated to, you know, give people a, an opportunity. And I've had it. This business has been great to me. So uh, why not share? Well, and I, I mean, that's one thing that I learned from the documentary is that this is the re you're the real deal. You know, like the Jewish Santa Claus or, or whatever. Right. It's not just some, I mean, you could make a lot more money <laughs> oh, sure. if you could doing something else. But um, I really do feel like you care about that changing people's lives thing. Yeah, well, here's where it came from, because you're from up north. I went 21, 21 22 years ago. I was um, dating a, a woman here in, in California, and um, she recommended me to go to a place up north where you live called the Hoffman Institute. Oh. And have you heard of it? Yeah. Okay. I went to Hoffman. Okay. And it changed my life. Oh, wow. And, you know, now it's become so popular because uh, Katy Perry went. Okay. Um, she met her hus husband or, or boyfriend or lover, Orlando Bloom, there. And um, so did Justin Bieber. So many people, his manager went. Uh, you know, um, so many amazing people went to Hoffman over the years. And they it changed my life. In one week, I was able to go through a life-changing experience. And I learned so much there. And it really blew me away, you know, because, you know, we're in the, being raised in the world of show business. Mm. Um, it's not real. Let's face it. It's okay. not real. Okay. <laughs> You're admitting it. It's not real. It's, it's a fake life. It doesn't have to be. So that's, yeah. but it changed my life, Hoffman. So I said, how can I get off the road 
and, and, and see if I can change people's lives from what I learned, you know, at Hoffman. And basically that's how I, you know, added that to my camps. I started the camps beforehand and, you know, it's been so incredible to see the amount of graduates and people we have and to see what they've gone on to their lives to, you know, make, record new records, record, uh, be in bands, okay. um, you know, we had people quit their jobs and go to London School of Drumming, you know, and, and they call me up and say, David, I got good news, I got bad news. The good news is I quit my job on Wall Street. And the, you know, the, the bad news is I can't afford to come to your camps anymore. It's, it's not about that. I'm glad you can't come. If you're doing, if you're doing your passion, um, then, then that's what it's about, you know. And so Hoffman gave that to me, and I'm driven to give that to everybody. Wow. In terms of the going for your passion, like when, where's the crazy line? Because for me coming down here, it was just, I mean, I feel like I've had every challenge. I don't know if life just does that or whatever, but people would probably say with the amount of money I have in my bank account, and now my car is missing, but I haven't had time to deal with that today, but um, it's not repossessed. I own it, but um People would say I'm I'm crazy because I've been at this for so long with no traction, and how do you know when someone like when in the document they said you know don't don't quit your job you know they, right that was the joke okay yeah yeah but I mean what what's the line when you know it's time to go pro and just well, fuck it or be sensible and okay give so, it up okay so first thing I learned you don't throw out dirty water before you have clean water. So that's a simple thing. Um, I, I always did this hot, uh, my philosophy years was, I went to Amway when I was 20, when I was 19 years old, someone brought me to an Amway meeting. And they have really great philosophy in Amway. You know, they, they want you to sell the Amway products, but the, your goal is to try to sell the Amway products on the side and make more money than your regular job. Mm -hmm. So not, you, you have to work hard. You have to do things twice. I mean, you, I mean, you have to do both things. You don't stop one for the other. When you see that one is exceeding the other and that you can survive on the one, then, then you make that move. Um, you know, for example, with me, I was a sports agent. And then when I went into the entertainment business, I, you know, I was doing entertainment at the same time. In 1986, I brought the monkeys back and I did huge and then Dirty Dancing, huge. And then Ring on the All-Star Band, huge. So that's where I, and that's why I gave up the sports because I just, oh. I, I didn't love, I love the athletes. I, I just didn't like the business. Um, and you know, people look at me today, wow, these guys are making millions and millions of dollars. And I said, God bless them. I just didn't like, you know, hanging with these, uh, you, know, you know, hanging, you know, my job sorted, my, my job was hanging out and I'm not, a, I don't hang out. So mm -hmm. when I had a, a pitcher who was the top relief pitcher in baseball and in, 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 in contract wise, you know, cause to me, the winner is not the one with the best statistics, but the one with the best contract. Mm -hmm. And um, and him telling me, well, you didn't come to the club to hang out with me last night. And I mm -hmm. said, that's not what I do. You know, mm -hmm. I, I made you the highest paid pitcher and I made sure that you're set financially for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I enjoyed the entertainment business because it's more creative. You'd come up with mm -hmm. ideas. And so, uh, you know, I, you don't throw out one thing for another. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think at the last rock camp, it was incredible because, and every camp is incredible. It's like the, like the comedy camp. The last comedy camp was great. Everyone always says the next one's always better, but it's really true because you learn more and more. You meet new people. So at this last, um, at this last rock camp, we had three, three special guests. One was, um, a fellow from a band called 311. His name was Nick Hexham. And Nick Hexham told the story. His parents were, um, they were scientists. And his parents told the story. I mean, he told the story of how he made it. You know, no one makes it overnight. Mm -hmm. Don't ever believe that. Mm -hmm. And he worked every club. They toured. That band toured and toured and toured and toured. They spent 200 nights on the road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they went for the dream. And finally, you know, something happened. Their, their, their fourth album made it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can never stop. You should never mm -hmm. stop, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, he talked about... You know, how he, how his career started and, you know, all these three, that was a guy named Noodles from The Offspring. All these three artists told the people, there were no, there's, you know, in show business, there's, you know, you, and especially in, in performance and there's no short circles. There's no circles, you know, 
And, and you know, it's the same thing like being an athlete. A guy would say, can you get a guy on a team? I said, no, they have scouts and the, and, and the, the best athletes on the field. Well, show business in performances and being a comic, to me, the best line that Jay Leno said, you know, he said so many great lines. I mean, there's so many amazing stuff that I picked up on him and the Corolla. But he said, you got to move to Los Angeles. Mm. And because if you're good, you're going to get seen. There are people out every night at comedy clubs looking to find talent. Mm. And, and everybody, you're not going to get discovered in bumfuck Iowa. You're going to get discovered in Los Angeles because in Austin, Texas, too, you know, but... Yeah, so and, what about just putting, but th people say then put all your energy into YouTube because people are looking online for... YouTube, yeah, Justin Bieber, he proved that. YouTube is great. Um, YouTube is great. The problem, I think, with YouTube is that, you know, I feel bad for comics because they have to give give out their material, you know, and Billy Joel never performed on for television. He did his first TV special. I can't believe it. Because he said, I want people to come see me perform live. Mm -hmm. I think with the, the YouTube, you know, once you put your act up there, you know, people see your, they see your act, your they shit. see all your shtick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I went to see Nikki Glaser the other night and um, oh, I was so upset. Why? I was so upset. Why? Okay. So I saw the, the, the Tom Brady roast. I am a huge fan of Tom Brady. Okay. What he's accomplished... And I'm very lucky to have a friendship in Coach Belichick for years because he coached at the Giants. And, and I, I'm a Brady fan, and I loved Belichick, and I love the way he coached those two work together. And they win six Super Bowls together. His whole story is amazing. He wasn't even the first-round draft pick. You know, he never gave up. The guy walked into the owner, and, and the first day he says, you're going to be so lucky to get me. He, that's so much confidence he had. So, uh, you know, I watched this roast. And then... You know, it was dirty. Okay, it's fine. And I still don't understand why he did it. I guess he, he just wanted to show everyone he's normal. And mm. I guess he didn't know what was going to happen about his wives and his ex-wives. And his, But I laughed. Three hours straight, I have to admit, I laughed. Okay. Nikki Glaser killed it. She slayed. She was so great. Her lines were great. And you could tell the difference when a ball player roasted and when a, a professional comic. You know, you could tell those. But she got up there. And she was the best thing. She got a standing ovation. Wow. She had, and she's been on podcasts and she's been on Howard Stern and her own podcast. And she went on all the shows. She said this was the greatest week of her career. Mm. So I looked up and I see she's doing a show at the Hollywood Palladium for Netflix as a whole comedy special, uh, the whole comedy week. You know, the Montreal Comedy Festival's yeah. ended okay. and it's no longer went bankrupt. So, you know, Netflix is going to do this every two years, I heard. And they presented a lot of comics. So I show up, I buy a ticket for my wife and I, and we're going to go see Nikki Glaser Saturday night. Well, the first thing was, it said 9.30 and then it said 10.30. So I wasn't sure what time the show started. Okay. Um, I got there at 9.15, make sure I don't miss any of the show. Mm -hmm. I come there at 9.30, no show. Oh. It's, I'm still waiting a lot. And it's not waiting a lot, waiting my seat. 10.40, Nikki Glaser comes out. And I thought, great, I'm going to see this woman perform a set, an hour, 45 minutes and now, whatever she's going to do. She comes out this five minutes and she tells the jokes that she didn't oh, do no. at, 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 at the Brady Rose. And she reads them from her phone. Funny, good stuff, you know. Then all of a sudden she brings out a comic. So I figured, okay, she's going to introduce one comic. Then she's going to introduce me. I heard there'll be a few openers. She introduced five comics. She did a, a little one joke in between each comic. And then she said, good night. Now, this was advertised Nikki Glaser. And I was really, really disappointed. I think I'd never been to a show that I'd been th this disappointed. Wow. And um, and she's really supposed to be the hot comic now. Well, thank God I went home and watched her special on HBO. <laughs> and, and she was funny. But I'll tell you what I enjoyed most about the comedy camp. You don't need to do dick jokes all day. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that clean comedy is still successful. And look at Seinfeld. He's still, you know, mm -hmm. he's doing well. Um so I'm not saying everyone has to be super clean, but I, I think there's a there's a whole market now for, you know, but everyone's scared. So that's the problem with comedy now. Mm -hmm. I watched the Don Rickles piece the other day, mm -hmm. and it was so funny. But you know you can't do that stuff now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I started in the Catskills. I started booking comedians. Um, I love Teddy Youngman. I love Freddie Roman, Rodney Dangerfield. I mean, comedy to me is it, it's. It's harder to be a comic than to be 
anything in show business. Yeah. So a, a, a guitar player can get up there and, and, and perform, and a rock band can do a song mm -hmm. for the rest of their life. But to keep up in comedy, mm -hmm. you got to keep up your writing, keep fresh. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I, you know, you look at Seinfeld, you look at Leno, just follow what these guys have to do. They mm -hmm. write every day. Yeah. They perform in clubs mm -hmm. and they show up. They're really, Jerry Seinfeld and Leno, they both don't need it. They both are just pure comics. Yeah. And, and, and they're pure. And, and, you know, and I think, I think we learned so much from Leno. Um, my favorite story was, um, do you remember when he told the story that, um, about Rodney? Uh, no, Rodney, no, the one, I like the one where he said, um, hold on, by the way, this is very cool. You get massage, you, you talk anything. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to confess everything in my life. <laughs> you should call this confessions. No. <laughs> okay. Um, is pressure okay, by the way? Yeah, pressure's great. Okay. Um, the only thing different this was if you put something in the water. Okay, no, okay. No, okay. So here's this. He, Jay Leno got up there and told the story that when they, I hope I tell it right, when they were looking for, um, they were looking for people to, to take over the, um, you know, it's hard. I got I feel like closing the, my the, eyes. The Tonight Show. Yeah, the Tonight Show. The right? Tonight Show. Okay. <laughs> tonight Show. So they're doing the Tonight Show and, 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 um, he was getting his union scale, $520, you know, to appear on the Tonight Show. And he gets a call from a manager who said, I'm representing three of the other people auditioning and they're getting 25,000 a night. Um, oh, I remember why don't you, why don't you, um, let us represent you? And Jay said, you know, let me think about it. And, and then he went home that night and he said, you know, Johnny Carson owns the show. And can you imagine he, at the end of the month, he's going to look at the books and he's going to say, I paid this guy a hundred thousand, this guy a hundred thousand. I paid Jay Leno $2,500 to, I'm going to hire Jay Leno. And he was, he did the Tonight Show for 18 years and he made millions of dollars. And he said, I haven't even touched that money. It's all in the bank. He says, I made my living being a stand up comic. And, and I thought that was so cool because money, you know, money will come. I always believe mm. my, my rule of thumb has always been go with your passion first. Okay. The money will come. Um, money will follow. But you gotta get, so, so someone like yourself needs to move to Los Angeles. I don't know. And you gotta work at a comedy store and you gotta get onto these comic shops. And I think that these scouts, there's so many scouts out there. They're looking for people. Where's the best place to cast somebody? At a comedy shop, you know, because mm -hmm. you see their personalities. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud now. You walk in for a casting call and you do a reading and for five minutes and then you leave for three minutes and if you go see someone perform for 20 minutes, you'll learn more about them than, yeah. you know, so a lot of these comics, they've all been discovered and, and it's like buying a lottery ticket, you know? Mm. So I think LA is the market. Uh, I think that was the best advice I, I, I got, um, that gave out. I think there's so many of these clubs. Um, I've been to some of these open auditions. They were, they're great. Um, you know, and I, I just thought that following the, the life of a comic, no, any age works. Um, mm -hmm. if you can deliver the goods and never stop. And, you know, I've seen comics at the, at the comedy store, 70 years old, 80 years old, that's you right. know, you know, you know, that's a great thing about, uh, you know, people said to me, you know, you do these baseball fantasy camps and there are these fantasy camps. I said, you know, you cannot be a baseball player after 30 years old, 34, mm -hmm. 30. You can't be yeah. a football player. But, you know, you can be an actor. You can write a song and go to music camp. And, you know, people write songs at 75, 80. Mm -hmm. Look at the Stones. They're out touring at and Ringo Starr, 84 years old. He's out touring. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and they're not doing this because they're money. They're doing it because they love the passion. There's nothing like our industry. And the people are great. Um, and, you know, part of what I learned at Comedy Camp was just having all those comics together in a room. That itself was, was a great... Uh, it, it was so fun. Yeah, what did you meet? You met some good people. Yeah, Caroline Ray and okay. uh, how, Carol Liefer. How was Caroline Ray? She was amazing. She, she, I loved her I advice. I loved her advice. And, you know, I hired her. Come, she came for four days. And at the last camp, she loved it so much, and she really ran the camp. And she had the best advice. Uh, and she's just like, "You get up there and you own the stage. Do not take your eyes off me." And, yeah, you know she. And she said she wants to, you know, especially work with the women, right? Because it's oh, like this so you know, great. apologetic or whatever. Yeah. She she and I connected on uh, woo woo stuff. Yeah, you know, and 
Okay, I have a question for sure. you. So, uh, not to call her out or anyone, yeah. but just say say there was someone from camp that is famous that said, you know, that they would be on the podcast. And so then message them, no response. Okay, so let, let, let's talk about that. It's very hard. And, you know, I, I thought Jay Leno, okay, so someone came over, someone over to Jay Leno, a lady I know, and she said, and she said you know, I learned at camp, that I should be forefront and I should ask going to go, you know, be forthfront and, and forthright and ask. So I'm asking you, Jay Leno, um, I produced the Christmas and Hollywood Parade. Uh, yeah, and she, she said, and then no biggie. That's how Carol Leifer said to ask the question. Right. Like, okay. would you be willing to consider, okay. if not, no biggie? I thought yeah. Leno was, Jay was so cool. He said, you know, I just don't like waving at people. And yeah. he was so cool. Yeah. It's very hard for people in show business to turn people down. Because they feel bad. And they, they feel bad. Yeah. So you have to be a real pro at that. And and they don't want to let let in people down. So yeah. I've had it. Listen, how many times can I tell you that I've reached out to talent and I've said, "Would you do can?" Oh, sure, David. Sure, David. And then you know you never hear from them. Um, the, the face, Russ- sorry, is your face getting cut off? But- no, I'm good. <laughs> oh well. I'm okay. Good. I'm good. Huh? So it's, it's okay. It's too too late. We'll just keep going. Thank you. This so, is great. The bar's not supposed to. Be- I'm glad. And uh, it's and it's the bar's not, on my way. Yeah, it's not supposed to be there, but that's okay. Right. All right, so, My first one. Okay. I'll get better. So um, there is a, um, a rock star that I've made him offers. I even showed up to the Greek theater when he was performing. Mm. David, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, and, mm-hmm. and I mean, I've had so many of those. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it reminds me of this. I went to a roast once and Richard Belzer was a very close friend of mine. He slept on my couch when oh, he wow. first started stand up. And mm-hmm. I, to me... I, I would go see him perform, and I loved him. And I even started representing him before he was in Law and & Order. Uh-huh. And for five, six months, he lived on my couch. I was like 21 years old. Uh-huh. And I just thought he was so funny. And he, he was, yeah. he was a, he's a comics comic. Yeah, right. And he had that wit, and he mm-hmm. um, it, it was so great. So, you know, he tells a story at the roast. He said he was roasted, and then Robert Klein, he said, I want to thank Robert Klein. He's here on the dais. When I was trying to make it and I had no money and I was busted, I went to Robert and I said, Robert, could you lend me money? And he said, sure, call my accountant. And, you know, I'm still waiting for his accountant to return my call. <laughs> 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 you know, it's very hard, you know. Yeah. And I mean, even ball players and, you know, people are asked all the time. And, you know, I think, I think it's hard. And, yeah. But, you know, you cannot let rejection in our industry stop you. Right. Um, I, I, I bought a ticket to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame one year and I spent $2,000, went to the event and, and I asked a friend of mine, can you sit me near Slash? Mm-hmm. And I went over to Slash and, you know, asked him to do my camp and he did it. So, you know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. You know, not everybody's as cool as Slash, um, but people say things. And I think the world of podcasts has been so much now that, you know, they're, they're, they also don't want to give away their content, you know, mm. and, and they're doing their own podcasts. So right. I, yeah. th- I think that, you know, but and if anyone turns it down, you can't take it personally. You really can't take it personally. It's not you. It's usually them. And, um, okay. So when you say it's not, well, see, here's the thing is I know I have nothing to offer her. Right. Like right. I, I have a ridiculously low, I think I have 250 maybe subscribers on YouTube. Like it's, it's pathetic. And so, I mean, I can take inventory of myself and realize I have nothing to offer her. Um, but it's just, like you said, just, I guess, I mean, how many times would you say follow up and then let it go? You'd let it go. Just, just let the, it go. after the first one? After the first two, you know, mm-hmm. where Miles and I, we always talk about, um, Miles is here with us today and we, 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 we reach out to talent, we reach out to events and we don't stop. We'd be, we're persistent, you know, mm-hmm. George Steinbrenner, one said about me, he says, I'm so persistent. And, you know, I do. I, I stay on top of people and mm-hmm. as much as I can. And, uh, but then eventually if they turn you down, they turn you down. And, and you know, but it's very common in our industry, you know, to say no. And, and um, you know, even, even you know, how many comics do I ask to, to do comedy camp? And, I don't know. And a lot, you know. Really? And, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then, you know. But then I find a friend of a comic and mm-hmm. many times, you know, many times my offers don't even get out to the, the talent because oh. the managers, you know, they look at the number and 
and I can't pay to right. give advice and right. you know I'm, I don't want your act and anything just come and talk to people and give right. them give back and give back yeah. you know and I'll pay you for it and and in the end you'll love it because it will remind you what it was like when you first started mm -hmm. and, and, you know Gene Simmons um, said a great line he said I wish I knew of rock and roll fans again 15 years 50 years ago when I first started Aww. I would have met the right people and, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of people no the re rejection is part of our business Mm -hmm. um, you have to learn to get rejected. Mm -hmm. um, it's the hardest thing for actors and, and comics and, and performers. And yeah. um, But that's part, I, I get rejected a lot. So You did? Oh, sure, I did. I still do, you know. And It's interesting and, you still do, because I, I, I guess I think there's a there there where name recognition... Well, yeah, but, but you know, the, the, the people are still turning you down, you know, and they don't want to do something. I mean, i got so many names. I, you know, I'm friendly with a... A big rock star. We we toured together with Ringo for years. Mm -hmm. Every night after the show, we hung out, we talked, and then I asked him to do the camp, and he said, "Nah, David, that's not something I do." And you know, and then he went somewhere else, and he did his, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't take it personally, and I know he's a good friend of mine. He just it, it didn't it didn't fit for him, or mm -hmm. or he didn't like you know what I'm doing, or yeah, or he didn't want to jam with amateurs, you know. <laughs> Jamatures. You know, <laughs> I'm reading. I just finished reading the book about the Doors. And I remember calling Ray Manzarek, uh, the late keyboard player of the Doors, and I asked him if he'd come to Rock and Roll Fantasy again, and he, he like yelled at the phone, I don't play with amateurs. And, you know, so, uh, you know, and then I read the book, and I realized how arrogant he was. Okay. Even his, his bandmates said it. So, yeah, it's not for everything, not for everybody. But yeah. then, but Carolyn Ray, I thought she gave so much advice, and she came the, the last camp. And she was brilliant. And she loves to teach and, mm -hmm. and loves to help. And you're right, women, is, to me, it's the most important. And I see women comics are, are more and more now mm -hmm. than ever. Um, and I know she wants to. I, I thought Carol Liefer, she bombed. She said, I want to be there. Um, the second one, too? Yeah. Carol Liefer? Yeah, no, she, she didn't come. No. No, I wanted to change. I had to change it up. You know, yeah. I got jobs. I got lucky, though. I got yeah. lucky, too. Yeah, you got lucky. Okay. She is so big, Carol Liefer. She is so She's big. so humble, too. Humble. Oh, she my loved God. It. I, she, just, she told a friend of mine when she heard about it. Um, that, and then, you know, and then she saw Jay, and they reconnected, and she's been opening for him. And, um, you know, That's she, awesome. what a writer she is. Seinfeld. I loved her Carol Burnett. She wrote that Carol Burnett special, and it was unbelievable. And uh, she, no, she, and I remember seeing her as, as a um, going to the improv to see her. But, um, so no, you got to keep pursuing your craft, keep doing it because it makes, it makes it fun and you got to keep writing. I think that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of nonstop with the, I feel like I have so, I have so much material. Like I drive myself crazy because it's just everywhere. I'm filling up, you know, computers and it, you know, it's just, uh, I just don't have like, you know how Adam was saying horsepower to the rear wheels. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. So you got to like, motivate yourself. There's so many, there's yeah. so many variables to this. Right self-promotion and you know like carol leifer said you, you have to make your own opportunities and well because when preparation meets opportunity yes yeah, you yeah. know and she's still going you got to get motivated by these people at I, their that's age what, that's what was age so is not a factor for jay leno age right? is not a factor carol leifer they don't need the money they're so wealthy they love what they do mm -hmm. and it's it, it's their passion and i think what's great about it is the passion so do you throw out your dirty water no i mean you know the corporate jobs are are important um but i think you know uh, i don't know i think you keep doing it and and you never know i mean i've seen yeah. i saw this guy at this young comic no young comic this older jewish comic his name was fiveish finkel he was an actor <laughs> in the Catskills. fiveish finkel right fiveish finkel became a star at 80 years old he got on boston wow. law and he was like a attorney wow and he he made his career and you I know love that. you know so they need actors at all ages. You know, mm -hmm. one of the great advice I got years ago. I'm not trying to be an actor, by the way. Oh, yeah, okay. But but I'm saying most people quit the business because they don't make it, and, and they should, you know. And so there's always opportunities. Mm -hmm. But with your stand-up comic, uh, comedy, you need to go to clubs, and you can do massage here in, in L.A., and you can... You're still trying to get me to L.A. I, I, I really I'm, I'm not trying to get you. It's, uh, that's the advice I learned. But, but I really feel YouTube, if you just, because then you have a well, listen, international. Audience. You have to go with what your dream. You yeah. can do, you can do YouTube here in, 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 um, YouTube here in LA too. You know, YouTube works everywhere. But if you want to do the stand up, 
Um, I don't know. I just think the, the stand up in LA is just, is, is just, I mean, that's the best advice I think we got. Miles, what do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? What do you, uh, yeah. or it's, a, it's my opinion. It's not, I'm not right or wrong. It's a, my opinion. Well, David convinced me to come out to LA and I, I think there's a difference when you're in LA, you're meeting people, you know, it's uh, yeah. you, FaceTime is important. People yeah. start to get to know you and everything. I yeah. think there is a benefit to being out here, but you're right too. You know, YouTube is, uh, you know, you can do it from anywhere. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like this is a great way to network with people. It's much slower, you right. know, right. Right. Ramp up. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I think coming to LA, you know, I told Miles to come out here and, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to come out here and I, and then I, I, I always had a philosophy. Don't come out here until you have something and until you have a job offer. And that was my philosophy of years. And I didn't want to leave my family and my parents really. And then, you know, Mark Burnett, you know, came to see me and we made a deal about doing a reality show. And that's when I thought I'll come out here for a year. And, you know, I wanted to do a television show. That's my dream. And um, so, and I never left, you know, 13 years ago. So I, I think there's, and, and, and what's exciting too is that, you know, I, I, I went to, uh, I, I went to the, the show for, um, for Nikki the other night. And, mm -hmm. and although the show was terrible, and I, didn't, I, I, was, I felt a bad experience. I bumped into an agent there who who has been really been behind me and and you know I want to sell this com from comedy fantasy camp as a as a series, um, mm -hmm. the whole idea and I found an amazing producer, That's um, and uh, we're working on it and uh, you know there was last comic standing but I, I want to do a different type of camp uh, show and. Um, and, I, and if I was in New York or San Francisco or Denver, right. it, it wouldn't work here. I can take a meeting here. I can pursue. I can be yeah. in front of someone's face. Mm -hmm. um, I just think the opportunities, even the even my rock and roll fantasy camp, I'm in L.A., all the stars live out here now, you know, all the musicians live out here now. So I'm able to, I, I don't know, I just, I love the weather and, yeah. you know, I hate the taxes, but. Um, right. Thank God. I don't I'm make... laughing like I have that problem. I don't have right. that problem. Right. I, I, I feel free. Exactly. No, I don't pay a lot. You know, in New York, with this as much. I'm just saying, but the weather's great. And I got my kids out here now. So, and the grandkids. And Aww. yeah, and that's really what makes a difference for me. That's cool. You want me to ask them? Do you yeah. have questions for me? Um, About massage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the massage is great. Um, but yeah. What's the weirdest story happened with you with the massage? Oh, man. Uh, I got called up to, so I used to work at the Four Seasons in San Francisco. Right. And the guy who answers the door is um, bright pink. You know what I mean? Like right. uh, corned beef, um, boiled <laughs> corned beef cabbage. And uh, has a huge neck. And he had ordered three carts of room service. It was like steak eggs it was mostly the proteins levon helm used to order the entire menu who is that he was the, i know the, that name the guitar the, the, drummer. the, the drummer in the was band he, was he a big guy the smallest guy in the world what the heck i don't know that was his that was his thing he would order so the funny. entire menu I, you came to you couldn't even walk around his room because there were you know tables and tables and there. would he eat it all no <sighs> just because he could huh just because he could that's Fuck you, money, right? Right. Order whatever you want. But he didn't have it all. <laughs> he didn't have uh -oh. the money. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But anyways, he's I love that guy. But anyways, That's okay, so the guy orders, eats, eats, eating everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so then he says, um, okay, yeah. So I go into the, the restroom to wash my hands, and I see he's got an overnight kit, but there's hardly anything in it except a syringe and Viagra. Okay. So... I'm like, oh no. <laughs> okay. And then he's uh, face down and he starts talking to his girlfriend and it starts escalating on the phone. Right. And then they start screaming at each other. And he said, just just work on my uh, glutes, just very light pressure. Now he had a 90 minute massage. Okay. So he just wanted me to do thumb over thumb pressure very well. He knew what he wanted. Huh? Yeah, he knew what he wanted on his glutes. Yeah. So... I'm there going like, oh, and he had big, um, he had scar tissue in his glutes from injecting stuff. Okay. So I didn't know this at the time, but you can do a lot of pressure on people who have um, been injecting steroids because their tissues are tearing. 
So that's why the super light pressure. And then he, he starts screaming. I, I feel like she was a stripper. I just, it, or, or a retired stripper or something, but I just felt like that vibe. He was from Vegas. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, he takes the phone, throws it across the room and then I'm like, Oh, what do I do now? So I just kept doing that. I kept doing, kept doing that. Mm -hmm. And then he said, give me the phone, go get me the phone. So anyway, it was, uh, Okay, that was crazy. It was totally crazy. It was one of those things where I had my eye on the door just in case he went into a roid rage on me. But yeah, I mean, the whole thing, it just kept going like that, kept going like that. But um, I think that's that's one of many. That's the one I can tell publicly. Okay, so let me ask you something. Yeah. Um, when I grew up in comedy, I learned this thing called point of identity. And, you know, I used to, Hedy Youngman said, take my wife, please. Mm -hmm. Joan Rivers said, can we talk? Mm -hmm. uh, Roddy Dane, you feel like I get no respect. Yeah. What, Liz, what's your point of identity? My point is right in your back right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have a, sh I don't have a shtick or a, um, but don't you think that's, a a, I think for a comic, a point of a identity. Comic, I think, isn't that kind of a outdated Is thing? it outdated? I don't know. Like, here's your sign and. I don't know. Is there a point of identity? A hook. Is there a hook? What, 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 what do you want someone to walk away after seeing your comic, you know your routine, have, and, and what, what do you want them to remember? I don't have a, I don't have a callback, a constant callback. Like I don't, I really feel like I cannot be branded. If you saw me do stand up, right? Yeah, I don't remember it. Oh uh, well, I, I thought I was unforgettable. But anyway, yeah, no, it was, it was actually very sweet. Adam's notes were uh, comfortable on stage, right? Fearless, keep going. Yeah, yeah Miles and I, we're gonna, we're gonna go through it. He's gonna show it to me. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll go look okay, at it. Okay, thanks. Well, that's a great. You know, let me tell you something. That was great that he said that. I thought so too. Yeah, was great. I, I felt. Um, and that's was, great because he didn't do that to everybody. Okay, that makes me feel. I don't yeah, know. he didn't. Um, there were some people, you know, it was that shouldn't painful. quit their day job. It was jobs. painful. And you know, uh, Brian Felber. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was very sweet. He wrote me afterward. Wow. And, yeah, and he said, "I felt like you didn't think you did a good job." He said, "But your talent's undeniable." Keep okay. Going. So, Liz, stop, yeah. stop right there. You okay. came to Los Angeles. You went to the Improv. You performed. Look at the reaction you got. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying you get to the Improv right away, but you could. You can go to their open auditions. But yeah. there's flappers. There's so many other comedy stories. Flappers. Yeah, that's what Jay Leto. I know. Was. I, I see there a couple times a week. Yeah. Sorry, just a funny. It's a funny name. It yeah. reminds me of. Um, like knuckles or you know, yeah, know yeah. what what what, what, what made you want to get into comedy? I couldn't not. I was class clown, okay. um, hyperactive. From I mean, I was even annoying as a hippie kid. Right. You know, um, we had no grades. You know, just achievement beads and right. um, and all that. But um, I just it's just in it's my soul. You okay. know what I mean. So, and who uh, are some of your heroes? Brian Regan. I got to meet him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I did an impression of him, and so I won a contest doing an impression of him. Okay. And uh, his manager sent him my tape. This is my my humble brag. His his manager Rory sent him my tape when he was on the road. This is how long ago it was. It was so long ago, but he sent him my my video. Um, and he, and when I met him, because that was one of the prizes, he said, "I can't believe it." He said, "You got my mannerisms, everything." He said, "I feel like we're kindred souls," and I really do feel like. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, who else? Um, I love Carlos Elizaraki. I don't know if you know who that is. He's no. doing voiceover now for Nickelodeon, but um, Miles does a lot of voiceovers. He's a Miles. He's a voiceover guy. You do? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. That's awesome. He's got a great voice. Um, uh, by the way, I hope all your people listen to our podcast too. Rock Camp the podcast. Yeah, if you really want to hear my voice. Yeah, <laughs> and more of David's. Right. Do you, are you into rock and roll? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, the comedy thing. You know, I I had fun. I have fun at the comedy camps, but oh, you know, I came great. into the picture uh, as an eleven-year-old at the rock and roll fantasy camp. Do you so. want to just come over here so people can see? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring Miles in. Yeah. Like, who's that boy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring Miles. Miles has been coming to rock camps since eleven. Yeah, I've been coming since I was eleven really? years old, and uh, you know, I started doing these interviews at, at camp and I would annoy all of David's artists. And David was my second interview ever. I didn't massage him when we did it, but you know, I was 11. That would have been weird. Um, <laughs> he offered me, a, he offered me a joint, but I said, no. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. At 11. No. Yeah. No. No. In my world, that wouldn't have been too. In, well, in LA, in LA, you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I came to the camp as an 11 year old and it, it opened me up to this whole new world. And I really became kind of, you know obsessed with it and wow. started doing these interviews which i think was really 
kind of a way to stay close to it. And, uh, you know, David started letting me do the Q and A's at camp and, and then oh. I interned for him in college and, and here I am now I'm it's working 24. It's been working. So he is a monster, <laughs> <laughs> a good monster. Yeah. Uh, yeah he is. Miles has been great too. It's he's, been fun. He's, a mensch. he's awesome. Yeah. He's, a he's mensch. awesome. Thank I've you. had four years of college. I mean, I really could have saved my family a lot of money if I had just stuck with David instead. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. And I really, yeah, I've had some great people like like Miles. I've had people take over record labels and over the years. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've had some really great people. But Miles is, is destined to become great in our rock camp business and our comedy camp. So. He's a keeper. Very cool. I'm loving it. I'm yeah, loving it. And awesome. Brit, our team is awesome. Yeah, team's, team's awesome. awesome. You're motivated. We're motivated to, you know, we're motivated. So keep going. I want to hear. So, so oh, no, your no. comedy, what, 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 so what would you like people to, when they walk away, what's the, is there a message a comic please? I, I, I think it's a, a message. Yeah, or, the, or a routine they you want to listen to or learn. What, 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 when, when you get off stage, how do you know if you, you, you killed it? People cr tell me they are cried or oh, they good. peed or their cheeks hurt or right. um yeah just people just who are like we, we were tired of laughing our faces hurt oh that's so awesome and, and that's my goal right. i mean not I, I feel like i'm bragging but i just say no. say nice things about myself is that people have a physical reaction to it you know where they like double over or they like yeah their and, and you write hurt. your own material yes mm -hmm. it's all yours yeah because yeah you know leno used to get material eventually you know you get people to write for you and at the last, I don't like that. And yeah. he even said, "Don't do that because you'll resent having given away oh. your material." Which that makes sense to me. Well, he when he when he did Tonight Show, people he had writers, you know. Yeah. So, but it would, you know what I loved about meeting him? I yeah. didn't really. Well, I did meet him. Yeah. Was hearing him just talk like a real person because yeah. he is so much funnier than any monologue I ever saw him do. Yeah. And also to see him or hear him use the c word. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, but he wasn't trying to do it for shock value. It was just matter of fact, like in this country. <laughs> right. And to see him swear, I you know what? I just felt I almost fell in love with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just he's so comfortable with his own skin. He loves people so much. Loves people. Loves young comics. I mean, the first. It sounds time... wrong. It sounds wrong. That, that remember that line when he said that guy? He was like sixteen or something. He said. I saw you when I was 14, where he goes, I didn't touch you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, everything he said. He was, uh, so I, I love when he, when he brought those people on stage. And so, so what we learned, that was so great at the last camp. We, we, we saw what Caroline did yeah. and in analyzing people's routines. Yeah. And then we had Jay do it. So, and, and, and then you know, at the last camp, we had them all do it, you know, we, oh, wow. we had, um, That's what's his awesome. name? Yeah. John Lovin. I got to fix this leg. I'm cramping up on this leg. Okay. Bring your leg back. What do I do? Just uh, bring, kick it back up here. Oh, bring it back. Okay. Or, or, forward. I brought it forward. Okay. Okay. Um, Jay Leno. I mean, yeah. I mean, to see, uh, I thought, and, and to me, the funny stuff was when we saw Carolyn and John Lovin and Miles and I were mm -hmm. backstage with um with them yeah to see the comics interact with everybody mm. was just incredible that's sweet and, and that was the nice thing in the hollywood reporter he said you know comics need to be together that's right they need to be together you got to hang out with comics you know i remember yeah. growing up in the castles you know every friday broadway danny rose used to happen you know there was a there was a meal that these guys you know they laugh amongst themselves you know mm. so it's, yeah. it's, it's a sweet fellowship. It really is. It is a sweet fellowship. You know, uh, you get like, to work up in San Francisco. Are there clubs up there? Yeah, but I, I don't like going into San Francisco anymore. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because my car winds up missing. Right, right. <laughs> or my so where do you converter. get to work? Well, there's the punchline in Sacramento. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, right now, mainly focusing on YouTube. Just because okay. I have the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get on YouTube. My kids will... Let me tell you something. YouTube, what did you say about YouTube? My daughter watches YouTube a lot. I, I, I think if I could find, if there was a business model to to do a series on YouTube, it's always been my dream because... What's well, monetized so you, in perpetuity, right? So Well, no. I mean, for example, you you sell a show to a network mm -hmm. and you get a million viewers, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe half a million. Mm -hmm. You go on YouTube, you can get millions That's and right. millions of people. That's but, right. But, you know... 
Do it, do it, do it. I think you no, should. I don't know, but this, this is the business model, who's going to pay for it, you know? They, they put ads on it. I know, but it's not enough to pay for the production. You wouldn't believe how much money. Yeah. Well, then I would just do low production value. I mean, Alice, people yeah, are attracted then, to low production value. Yeah, right Alice now. Cooper, he did a he did a, a show last year looking for the biggest band, and it was fun, you know? It was it was low production, but they, again, they didn't do a second season because, you know, you you, you got to rely on sponsors, everything like that. YouTube will get, it's, 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 still, it's still to be told. There's going to be a lot of new stuff on YouTube, you know? Well, there was a huge report that just came out that yeah. said, like, in the next three years, I think it was, was it Goldman Sachs? Just did a report on YouTube. And just the growth, it's it's not too late, but you got, like, three years growth window. Of just, it's going to explode. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Well, so now I'm going to convince you to get yeah. on YouTube, and I'm I will on... stay living in the yeah. California. Yeah. No, and the, the, the guy, I remember the guy, so there's a funny story, the guy who runs YouTube, the president of the entertainment, it's a guy named Lior Cohen. Okay. Lior Cohen ran, ran Def Jam Records, and he was partners with the guy who started Def Jam, um, and, um, okay, what's her Shit, name? Not Shit No, 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 the guy's name was, he ran away from the, this country because he got so many sexual stuff against him. Oh, oh P. Diddy? No, he, the guy before P. Diddy, you got it. His wife is is a model. Miles, his can you Google yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on. Def Jam Russell, founders were Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons, yeah. yeah. Oh. So him and Russell and Lee Arco. He, he left? Yeah, so yeah, Russell Simmons is not living in this country. Anymore. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. You, Where you, you Google been? him. Poor guy. You know, I'm what? poor guy. I don't know what he did. Or did. I'm not here to make any accusations. But Lior was um, a really good friend of mine. And, and uh, when he, in 1986, I remember making fun of him and... Russell, we would, we would we'd see each other on the street. We were friends, and we were starting out at the same time, and I said, oh, this rap crap, it's not going to work. What are you guys doing? You're wasting your time. I'm doing the monkeys. I'm selling out arenas, stadiums. I'm so hot with my bands, the monkeys, and these guys don't rap. Mm -hmm. And I laughed, and then, boy, I remember three years, five years later, I'm in L.A. at a dinner, and, and Russell Simmons says, do you need to ride home back to New York? My private plane is leaving in an hour. So... <laughs> I mean, you know, these guys were so successful. Now, yeah. Lior is, um, he runs YouTube entertainment. And, you know, we're more than, you know, we're more than friends with total strangers. I reach out to him and still waiting for his call back. You know, I get rejected too, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but he's he's built an amazing uh, YouTube. And then, you know, like my kids, they watch YouTube. My wife watches YouTube. I mean, it's all you, you can there. stay on. I went on last week on YouTube one night and to look up a, a, a singer that I liked. And four hours later, I, 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 put, it, I put it down. See? You can take that thing and go. That's right. Yeah, no, YouTube is great. And then the, once they learn your algorithm, yeah, yeah it's, it's the main right? thing I watch. Yeah. Yeah, uh, your yeah. daughter has 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, right. So, so wait a minute, that's why I owe you an apology. Because my daughter, Alana, um, who is Water First, Veggies Most, Alana Molstein. She's right. She, she, uh, she, she came out with a saying, Water First, Veggies Most. She's very, she's got 2 million TikTok followers. She's amazing. Wow. And she said, Dad, you got to lose weight. And I lost 60 pounds because she said I was killing her business. And, um, but let me tell you something. Alana said to me the other day, she said, Dad, I'm focusing on YouTube, YouTube. Okay, so how many followers does she have? I just looked to uh, 300,000. On YouTube, and wow. then she's got, you know, like a million. On ask TikTok. her how much money she's making from ads. Okay, well, I'll ask her, yeah. Yeah, and because it, it can super target and customize right. these, these ads. And it, I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, so what is she doing on YouTube? She just has a... Um, just put their stuff out there, Miles? Yeah, yeah, let's see. It's um, And then affiliate links, right? So if you enjoy the babe. So she does, you know, um, like her most recent video is... All the gluten free and kosher for Passover recipes in my cookbook. Oh, you know, your cookbook's stuff awesome. Like that. Oh, wow. It's my 100 pound weight loss story. Yeah, she does stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, she's doing great. It's okay. So you're right. So she's done it, but, but she, but she does have to come up and write, do creative material. That's no problem. Every, every, she's I have non stop. No if I, I, go, I, have no, I'm, I can be non stop. I, go, I, I just I, need an assistant. Right. So, okay. So she has her husband running and then she has assistants. Yes. Yeah, she has people. So a team. Yes. Yeah, she has a team. And that's what's interesting about Alana. She put together a team. And what's so cool is that, um, you know, I'll, I'll go have dinner with her. She invited me to go to dinner with her. And the next thing I know, she did a whole video about me. You know, so, yeah, she's always doing that. So we, we always laugh. You can't, you, you know, she's always doing something. But I'm there, whatever she needs. I'm, I, 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 I love, 
Listen, years ago, I said to her, why are you spending all your money to social media? And she said, Dad, you know what you're talking about? And $2 million, $2 million followers later, she's so oh. successful. I so, love that I love that you're humble enough to admit when you're wrong. Yeah, no, that's why I, I stayed away. I didn't know. Okay, let me let me go through some of my questions. Okay. Unless you want to know more weird massage stories. No. I have way more weird yeah. massage stories. Well, let's answer your questions for the new. Um, let's see. All right, so... Well, I think I know, yeah, do you think that, um, you already gave me advice. I have a question for you about what makes you laugh. I, but I, I, I'm just shocked that you go to these, it's pretty racy. You seem like you don't swear. So. No, I, no, so, so I don't, the, the dirty stuff doesn't really get, get to me, you know, unless it's really funny, you know, but, um, because I know myself. That when, if I'm on stage at rock camp and I'm doing it and, and no one's, and, you know, I, you, you try to get a laugh. Yeah. The minute you put a four letter word in, yes. they laugh. And, yeah. and I, and that's what Leno was saying. You don't need to do that. But, right. you know, that's, that's, right that, that's shock it. value. Um, uh, so, um, but going back to your question. So what, yeah, what makes you laugh? Makes, what, what makes, what makes me laugh? Makes, yeah. Oh, I, I'm that roast. Nothing like a great roast. I hate. I to, to me, roasts are so. My wife mean. hates like, them. I'm crazy. Yeah. yeah, she said that I'm with her. they're mean. I'm with they're her. They're mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see it, but my uh, mom was saying that Kevin Hart's daughter looked like she was, you know, she was plugging her ears and so uncomfortable. She's a little itty bitty, but yeah, I think no, she's. I think she's today. right. Like, I mean, right. I feel, I feel like plugging my ears. Yeah, roast. I mean, but I used to go to those roasts at the Friars roast, and some mm. of those lines are are really funny and. And I, I, I don't know why I would never let myself be roasted, no. but, um, you know, but I think that, um, that, uh, and I, and I love uh, Rodney Dangerfield. He makes me laugh. Don Rickles makes me laugh. Um, you know, those, those old time comics, uh, there was a guy named Mal Z Lawrence. He was the funniest comic in my, in my, for me, he was the funniest guy. He did a whole impression of the Catskills and, you know, the food and, and the way people ordered food up there because there was a waiter up there. So um, I thought Malzi was great. Um, Does he set up punch or impressions? He, no, he, no, he was just a stand-up comic and and doing doing you know he did not impressions. I once represented Fred Tra Fred Travelina. He was funny. Uh, he was my oh, client yeah. for a while, um, and uh, I never really put my whole heart into the representation of comics. And but um, I, you know the Casco guys always always made me laugh and. Um, no, the 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 dirty con. No, they don't get to me. I, the, you know, I'm, but you wouldn't. But you went to go see Nikki. Okay, so I, I didn't. Yes, I went to see Nikki because I saw her on the roast, and I thought, okay, so she and I didn't realize how dirty it was. Oh, but, she's an amazing writer, though. Yeah, some of the lines were great. Even the, even the listen, the, some of the lines are great. You know, and and yeah, she she, she is a great writer, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, and and she did you know the, the physical act out too. Like the combination yes. of the both to me is is the best. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have a question for sure. you. So um, when my best friend saw that you were having the comedy camp, actually her husband Dave oh, saw yeah. it, and then she said, "I just got chills. Like I just felt like, oh my god, you have to go just because you need people to see you and know who you are. Like you've done all the work, you just need to be seen, whatever." Right. And um in and, Los Angeles. That's right. Okay, you're no but I'm also on YouTube. Okay. okay, so let's not fight anymore. Yeah. Um leave that to my wife and I. Oh <laughs> yeah, not to change. But then um so then I, I went and I, I paid good money for this. I was telling you about that psychic medium who um she's got an amazing story. She's she's like underground psychic to the stars you know never had a website until six months ago right. that whole thing anyway she said did you just go to a thing where you met like five people and i, I was going no 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 anyway she goes you come on she and then she goes and there's one per and i changed my name like i sent it from my maiden name email so she wouldn't look me up or right anything anyway she's like you have to get the one guy who knew all the five people because he can help get you more people and anyway, she, she, she goes, what is it anyway? I can't figure out what you're doing. You're not an actress, but she goes, okay, I can't stand anymore. What exactly is it? And I was like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast where I massage comedians. She's like, oh my God, that's so great. And she said, you have to message the guy, the producer, um, 
you have to message him. And she goes, do it, do it, do it. And so I didn't do it. And that night I took a picture of my cat to send it to another cat person. And, um, it, I had never seen this before because I had messaged you maybe like a month before on right. email. Right. One of the options, and I had never seen this on my iPhone because it's always messages, is to email you. You. Yeah. Was to email you. Right. The picture of the cat. What? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what, what I did. So do you believe, have you ever had any weird kawinky dinks like that? Oh, not that I really pay attention, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, you see this you know, ask I, I get, I, I get, listen, I get, I get messaged a lot. I get a lot of emails. Um, and, uh, I try to respond to people right away. Um, maybe, you do, you yeah. do respond, which I appreciate. Yeah. But I mean, beyond, beyond that, I mean, to me, it was just more, I'm asking more about like it being a weird coincidence. To that get a picture of a cat. No, that, that that it was an option. She said, email him right away, follow up right away. And I hadn't. And then it, it gives me the option to message you the picture of my cat. I mean, do you, do you have any weird stories about meeting someone on a coincidence or? Oh, um. Have you seen a UFO? Anything weird? No, I'm not into any of that stuff. Sasquatch? Yeah, no. No, no, that stuff. No. Okay. Simple. Okay. Simple. All right. All you know, right. I remember years ago getting on a plane and. And there was an actress uh, 40 years ago. She sat next to me and she brought me a script and and um, she wanted to get a script made. And and I just, um, she she was able to, then back then she said, oh, I heard my, my brother's traveling on the plane or my father or somebody or my friend and uh, I want to get the seat next to him. And um, so the lady bought a seat and to fly to California. She heard I was going to California. She sat next to me and um, I don't know. And then I, I said to her, so don't, you know, you're wasting your time. I don't, I don't do, um, I don't do movies, but yeah, you know, I've had, you so know, that's a horrible story about inspiration. Yeah. No, I, I bet you I don't do movies. I, I advised her, you know, what to do and what I knew, but I didn't, that's not my field. Well, maybe you helped her. Maybe it did. I never heard from her again. So. <laughs> Which you probably were grateful you didn't have to tell her no. Right. 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 Yeah. No, I'm not into any of that. Uh, yeah, I, you know, life's simple. I try to keep the kiss system. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Or, or stupid, right? I like sweetheart. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so very much for your time. Yeah, it's been is an great. hour. Wow. Yeah. Wow, this is great. Thank you. Yeah, if you know any massage clients in the Los Angeles area, I'm looking to um, yeah. you know, expand my base. I go to Burke Williams, but yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, you probably get a lot of them here. People want to have mistakes in massage. Oh, you get all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to look at your stuff on YouTube. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yay. That was painless. For you. That was great. It was yeah, the opposite of painless. You got, did you get, did you get taken out of it? Oh, I, I think I put a dent in your face with okay, this. Right. Did you get good material? Yeah, that was great. That was great, right? Thank you.